Okay, so welcome to this lesson on campware, or sometimes referred to as packware, because we pack this clothes uh, and stuff away. Uh, it's not just clothes we wear, but anything we're going to bring on trip, it's going to be packed. And between you and your partner, you're going to pack all of this with your tent, your sleeping bag, and your sleeping bags into a big 115 liter canoe pack and during the day you're not going to have access to it. So this is the kind of stuff you're going to want when we get to camp. So that's why we call it camp wear, but you're not going to use it while you're paddling. That's why you had paddling wear, which is about the stuff that you have access to while you're paddling. Now, this is a lesson just on the clothes, the personal items that you're going to pack in a 20 liter stuff sack. So each person gets roughly a 20 liter stuff sack. So if you think about it, you and your partner, that's 40 liters out of the 115 liters. You got to go your tent, your sleeping bags, your sleeping pads still. So it's really important that you don't go too crazy with this and, and don't overfill or try to have more than you can take in here. Now, there is a one item that will not, I'll talk about that does not go in here, but the rest of your items should fit comfortably in this 20 liter stuff sack. So I'm going to start with the most basic items is underwear. And I know like this is always a bit of an issue is how many do I bring? But I can tell you right now, you just generally wear your underwear at night in the evenings while you sleep. If you really think you need to, the most I would bring is four. I don't bring four. I, I I can get away with uh, when I'm only going to wear them for a few hours and then change back into my paddling wear. I feel like I can get away with a, a little less than that. So I do two pairs and I do not bring any cotton. I usually try to stick to synthetic underwear. So I'm going to start by taking my underwear, which I'm not going to hold up and show you, and I'm going to put them into my 20 liter stuff sack. So they're going to go right into the bottom of my 20 liter stuff sack. Okay. The next item I'm going to put in are my socks. Okay. I don't wear socks during the day and I generally don't wear socks when I'm at camp. It's usually kind of like summer weather and I'm walking around in uh, my, my Crocs, which are my camp shoes and I'll do those next. Uh, so I just bring along some fleece socks. These are fleece socks here made out of fleece and they're beautiful, nice and comfy, thick, warm. I use them for cold nights. I also sleep in them at night. And generally, I think of them more important than that. These are a nice pair of icebreaker wool socks. I'm going to bring an extra pair just in case. It's one of these things like, do I really need this? I probably don't. I should probably not bring it. But I often get suckered into doing it. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not bringing it this year. But I'm going to show you that I, you can bring it. It will fit into your 20 liter stuff sock if you want to. If you have a few pair of really thin uh, athletic socks that you want to bring along, you could throw them in. Uh, but again, uh, if I ask students from past trips, the one thing they would change if they did the trip again, and it's almost always take less stuff. Okay. And that includes clothes. Like there's lots of things you take that you just don't use. And every time you do that, you're just adding to the weight and burden of what you bring. Now, one of the things I don't put in here that's part of the camp wear is my footwear. Now you could have a pair of another pair of running shoes, but my preference is to bring a pair of Crocs. These things are amazing around camp. Okay. You, you know, they provide you ample protection while walking around at camp. And you can go in the water with them and they'll dry off real quick. They don't absorb any moisture. Uh, they, they just, they're just really useful in this sense. I've got an old pair. They don't even have the straps left on the back of them. And I like them. I don't put them in my 20 liter stuff sack. I'm just going to stuff them in my pack somewhere, usually towards the top. Because when I get to camp, one of the first things I want to do is get my wet, soggy, uh, paddling shoes off and I want to put these things on because they're just so much more comfortable to walk around in and uh, they're great that way okay uh, now I'm going to move on and kind of go through a number of different things that I bring along on trips so t-shirts how many extra t-shirts I bring one yeah just one that's it no more just one I have one t-shirt it too is a, a synthetic wear t-shirt. Most of the time you'll see me wear this one. There have been lots of trips where I didn't even put this on. It's amazing. But I do. I get away with it. Sometimes I do. I sleep in it because it's a nice night and it's okay. So I like to have one spare t-shirt, but that's it. Okay. Shorts. I have a pair of board shorts that I could bring along. Spare pair. If you're a guy, you might want a spare pair because you're also your paddling shorts. But I'm going to be honest. 
I don't know. I can, I got them. I can throw them in here, but I almost guarantee you, I'm not bringing these on trip. Just won't wear them. Don't care. And it's just more weight to drag along on the trip. I have what I want as far as shorts. I got these ones on here that I'm wearing while I'm paddling. And you're going to see here, really clever thing that I have is that in my pants, they have they're convertible so the legs can come off if i want to i have the option to take the legs off i almost never do it's one of these gimmicks you know you buy these kind of shorts and then you never take them pants they're convertibles they call them but what i do like about these particular uh, pants that i bought and i did buy them specifically for camping in is they are synthetic fast quick dry pants there is a built-in belt, so I don't have to worry about bringing in a belt for them, although the belt will slip out if I wanted it to, so that, that was important to me that it wasn't sewn into the uh, fabric. It has a nice little built-in belt so I can keep them up if I have to, and they're very, very light and quick dry. That, that's really important to me, okay? So I'm going to throw those into my pack. Um, I will show you, I know that most of you won't go out and buy and shouldn't really go out and buy a pair of pants like that, so I'm going to talk a little more about that. Just a pair of like track pants. These are an old pair of Adidas track pants I have kicking around the house. They're lined, but they're all synthetic material. So it will dry fairly quickly, although the lining won't dry as fast unless I turn them inside out and then it'll dry pretty good. Um, these work really good. What you don't want to do is bring a pair of really heavy fleece or cotton pants along. That's just not a good plan. Definitely 100% no jeans. We're not bringing jeans as our long pants, okay? You got to find something else to bring along for your long pants. And you definitely need a pair at night. It gets cool and you're going to want a pair. I'm not going to put these in there. Just showing you those as a demonstration. Now, a long sleeve shirt. I need one more long sleeve shirt. Well, this is it right here. This is my long sleeve shirt. Um, you... You get this as part of being in the course, and this is why you bring it along on your trip. It's really, really useful. I'm, I'm surprised how if I layer up and I wear this, how warm I stay. Um, it's really an excellent T-shirt. And even the kids after, many of them wear it for years. I see them on the streets wearing it, and they talk to me about how much they like their, their shirt. And it's not even really that expensive. Okay. Um, if you really wanted, you could bring a light cotton one. I don't recommend it. If this thing gets wet, it's staying wet, and it's going to just be cold wet. And if it's dry, it's not bad. It works just fine. But as soon as it gets wet, it's it's it's, it's no good to you. So don't recommend it, but I'm just showing you if, if you're really desperate, you could do that. Okay? I really like to have a pair of long underwear, and primarily what I wear my long underwear for is to sleep in. Now, if it's a cold night, I might put my long underwear on, layer up over top, put my pants, put my shirts on over top, and then I would find myself, when I'm ready to go to bed, I just strip down to my long underwear, and that's what I'm going to sleep in. So I have a pair of long underwear. We'll start with a... a uh, the shirt top that I bring, this is a Paradox, uh, it's kind of a merino wool uh, top. I would recommend merino wool or I would recommend a polypropylene if you can find one. But basically, any long underwear set that you can buy, even the stuff, the cheaper stuff at Walmart will work. Um, you're going to really make every effort to keep this dry. You really don't want it ever to get wet. So this is the shirt that I bring. And the bottoms I bring are a little bit heavier too. Uh, often. Sometimes I just bring a pair of tights. Um, I, I'm a cyclist, so I have lots of cycling tights that I can grab. And, and a pair of tights works really good. So for the girls who have uh, tights at home, that, that works good. The guys, sometimes if you play sports, you have a pair of tights that you wear over top, maybe for soccer or for hockey. And, and so I, I'd say that's a good thing. So these ones are a little bit heavier than your traditional tight. And, I, and I'll throw those in just as a, a comfort thing at night. Um, like to be warm at night. Don't want to be cold. Okay. And a lot of this stuff is serving different purposes that are out there. One of the next things I want to have is a uh, is when I'm sleeping is a toque or a balaclava. So I have my balaclava here. I really really like my balaclava. It provides warmth around my neck while I'm sleeping, and it just keeps my face open. I can pull a chin up and just keep a small area exposed and the rest of me is great and uh, if you don't have that you can go with a toque like this just a light and this one is a cotton one or wool one which is fine okay i'm just going to pack my balaclava 
and it goes in here. It's even smaller than the two, which is really nice. And then one thing you absolutely have to have is a, a warm coat of some sort. I have this fleece I'm wearing would be great, but my wife would be very upset with me if I took this nice fleece and I wore it out on my trip and I found myself getting it damaged either around the campfire or just dirty all around. It's pretty nice and it's expensive uh, a fleece. So I have an older fleece that I use specifically for camping. So I really encourage kids, if you have your favorite hoodie that you're going to bring along, and hoodies are fine for this, even if they're made out of cotton, it's okay because we're going to do our best to keep this dry at all costs. Um, just don't bring your best one or your, your new one that you just got for your birthday or something like that, right? You don't want destroyed. So this is mine. It's a MEC fleece. It's old, but it really has held up over the years and is in great shape. So I'm gonna stick that into my bag and I'm getting that kind of full, but I'm not quite there yet. I'll hold it up, show you, there we go. So still some room at the top. I still got three or four inches. That has most of my gear in it. Now, one thing you're gonna to wanna to have, probably like to have, although, that's another one of those items that if I don't bring it, I don't seem to miss it too much is a towel. Now, instead of bringing a towel, I often bring a chamois. This is a chamois chamois made in Germany. It's the original real deal that I bought. And it's very light, very packable. Um, and it works really good. It doesn't dry out the fastest if it does get wet, but it does do a fantastic job and you can wring it out and get all the moisture out of it. So it's not real heavy. And sometimes I'll even just strap it to the back of my canoe pack during the day and in the hot sunny day, it'll dry off fairly good, but it's really handy to dry yourself, your body. If you get wet and you need to, to dry off or even to dry off some of your gear and do things like that. I'll take this over a towel almost every time. Some kids will bring a towel, but it can't be a big, heavy beach towel. It has to be something light, fairly thin, and uh, you can do that, right? You do, you, you know, it is nice to have something of that nature with you, okay? <clears throat> All right, so I'll stuff my, my uh, sorry, my chamois in there, and I'm getting still got some room in here. Now, there's a few other things that you like to bring along on trip almost always, or some of the things you need, and you like to bring them along. One is I like to have a little baggie that has a few personal items in it. Now, depends on you as an individual. We have camp toothpaste available, so I don't need to do that, but I do have my toothbrush, and what I've done is I've even cut it off to shorten it just to make it easier to pack. It's not a weight thing. It's just so much easier to fit into the zip locky than if I have a big long toothbrush sticking out. So I have my toothbrush here with a, a case that covers the end. And I actually use this a lot of times on a lot of travel trips. I have some body lotion. Sometimes your hands and parts of your body get really dry and it's nice to have that along. And I also have a little chapstick just in case so I can also apply some uh, moisturizing to my my lips. Another option, another thing a lot of kids will put in here is a little bit of hand sanitizer. That's perfectly acceptable to have in here. Any other little personal item, but it should be able to fit in this baggie, okay? Nothing that doesn't fit in the baggie. Uh, you'll notice that one thing very distinctly absent is, is my deodorant. I don't bring deodorant, and I don't recommend you bring deodorant. You don't want to be smelling lovely in the bush because those smells are actually attractions to bugs and other animals. They've even heard stories about them being attractions to bears. So don't really need it. I'm going to be honest, we're all in the same boat. Nobody's really out there trying to smell good or appear really good. You're just going to be your natural selves, and so you'll get used to it. And if you bring it, I almost guarantee you, you'll probably even forget to put it on. I'm always blown away at how little I see kids brush their teeth or take a shower or do anything. One of the things you can bring along is a little bit of bath soap, uh, a little bar of soap, sorry, a little tiny bar or body lotion if you want. Um, and people will go in the water and wash off and rinse, and that's fine. You can do that. Um, I, I don't even bother with it anymore. I used to do it, but I, I just find uh, more often than not, I, I'm not bringing it. So for me, this baggie is pretty light, and that's a good thing. It's a lot less to carry and a lot less to bring. Okay. So I put that into my bag. Lots of lots of room. Another thing that I definitely want to have on my trip, and I want it in my bag, and I like to have it near the top just in case, is my flashlight. Now, my preference is to bring one of these headlamps, okay? So 
This, this will go over top of my head. I can put it on for a second here, if you wish, All right? There's my headlamp and I can turn this on and off really easy. It's really bright. It has a nice LED light on it and a couple pushes and it turns off. It usually has a couple settings. This particular one is a little bit shockproof, has a little bit of waterproof uh, features in it, which is kind of nice, but there's not really that expensive. I bought a couple of these for 20 bucks, a two pack, I think at uh, Canadian Tire one time. And uh, there is uh, batteries that uh, fit into it. I usually go out with a fresh set, but if I you know, think these batteries are good enough, I might just bring a couple of spare batteries. I'll put them in that little baggie that I had before, or sometimes I have them in my life jacket because I also use them for other devices that I bring along like a GPS or something like that. And I just want them available on me baggy them again and put them in. So that's my flashlight. I'm going to stick this in to my, my bag. And then a somewhat important thing to bring along is some toilet paper. Now this is a pretty small roll. I'd probably get a little bit more than this, double it up. But this is just my own personal supply. Each person brings their own little personal supply. Put it in a good Ziploc yet. I recommend getting a freezer baggie and put it in. And once you do, flatten it push it down. We, we don't need a roll to spin it on here. You're just going to use it on your own when you're out there. And you're going to put this into your your uh, your bag. And that's your personal stash. You're going to want to make sure you hang on to it. Don't lose it. Um, I do see sometimes one group of kids, two kids will share one and that's fine. And then take a bit bigger roll with you. But you don't need more than that. Like It's not like you need a crazy amount. Uh, the girls uh, may or may not need some personal products, uh, feminine products, and that's uh, something to discuss with them on a personal level. But generally speaking, you know, you don't need more than that. Here's your 20 liter stack sack, and you can see here, I still have a fair bit of room. I could probably get my Crocs on top of here. I'm not going to put them on top of here because I just find it's more awkward when I pack, but I can close up this uh, bag uh, nice and snug. And this is sort of semi waterproof, gives a little bit of water resistance when it's in the bigger pack, which will be waterproof. OK, so this stuff is going to stay nice and dry. I don't have to worry about it. We've been out on trips where it's raining all day long. And if your dry bag is sealed properly, your canoe pack is sealed properly, which I'll, I'll be demonstrating in that video. You don't have to worry about it. This will be dry. And uh, I've even had guys uh, flip their canoe and their packs floating in the water for five or ten minutes and they pull them out. When they get to camp, they open things up and there's nothing wet inside. So you don't have to worry about it. This stuff is going to stay dry. All right, so that is your camp wear. There's always a little bit of play here. You know, somebody wants to bring this or doesn't want to bring that. I'm okay with that. Just know that it has to stay within this compact size. And everything you bring, you have to carry. The less you bring, the better. And it's usually the guys who are good at getting this bag down to about half the size, and it's the girls who want to double it. And uh, it's just the nature of how it, how it works. I've seen some guys try to get crazy about what they're packing as well. No soap, no big bars of soap, no big bottles of body wash. Those things stay home. We don't need them. If you're bringing deodorant, that's in the car. We're not using it out in the bush. We just don't need it. We're going to live wild and free and, and enjoy ourselves out there. So that's your video on campwear. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, helps you get yourself ready for your trip.